afterwards i will take the questions for both okay uh, i think uh, we have uh, uh, to talk about we had energy sessions four sessions actually uh, to that to conclude we have uh, another speaker dr brahmanand mohanty will talk on integrated approach to energy sustainability i would like to request uh, uh, dr indramani to introduce dr mohanty welcome welcome dr Bama, uh, dr brahmanand mohanty ji he has been with us uh, you know during webinar almost all the days so dr mohanty is associated with department of energy environment and climate change under the school of environment resources and development at the ait bangkok since 1986 and as a faculty member also since 1991 he has also been serving the french environment and energy management agency uh, as its regional advisor for asia he has undertaken professional missions for bilateral and multilateral development agencies during the last three decades in some 25 countries especially in asia but also in the middle east africa and mediterranean region He is a graduate from Sri Aurobindo International Center of Education in Pondicherry. Completed his master in AIT and did his PhD from uh, the Institute of National Polytechnic from France. Uh, welcome, uh, Dr. Mohanty, for this talk. And uh, you very well understand our aim, and because you have been associated with us in this webinar, we expect uh, a very good uh, presentation from you. Dr. Mohanty, uh, Dr. Mohanty, you have twenty minutes, if possible. Okay. I think Mike, uh, Dr. Mohanty, Tetu, Mohanty. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Yes, uh, only thing I have lost the screen, but uh, uh, screen is here. You lost your screen. Yes, I think probably yes. the bandwidth problem. Okay, uh, let's do one thing. Tetu, you have the screen with you. You have the slides. We will. We will. Uh, get yes, that sir. Uh, I have shared the. I have shared yeah, the but, slide. But uh, his screen is gone, so probably <laughs> some problem. So yes, I can't see anything. Slide. Okay, yes. we will put we will put the screen. Can I, can we put the screen then? But I can see the screen. Say to can you help him out? Can you see me? Yes, sir. Can you just maximize your zoom? Maximize okay. zoom zoom screen. Yeah, I think it's. Now, if you don't have bandwidth, the problem will also come. I yes. Think, uh, we, we, we will. Anyway, I, I will start off. Uh, Now you close. You close the uh, screen share. He will put the screen for you. He has got the presentation with him. Okay. Okay. So can I start, please? Yeah, yeah. He will do that. Then you okay. tell next. He will. Share. Okay. All right. Okay. Can you please do it? Yes, sir. I have shared the screen. You share the screen now. Okay. Fine. Uh, all right. So since I attended the previous ones and I saw there was a lot of talk about how do you bring in renewable energy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I just felt that you know, if one only looks at renewable energy, one might miss out on the whole systems, because whenever you are looking at a system, you will have to see where you need to intervene to get the best results. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is a general slide where it showed what is the 21st century challenge, and we are all aware that we have to design our system, our lifestyle. And the way we produce, the way you consume, to fit into what we call the one planet living. Again, there is animation, so perhaps you need to click again to see uh, how the one planet living fit, fits in there. Can you see it? Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. yes, we can see so, that. So, so, so we have challenges for both high-income societies. I don't talk about industrialized countries and developing countries. I talk about high-income societies and low-income societies because. Even in developing countries, we have gaps between those who have and those who don't have. So when you talk about low-income societies, and that's where uh, most of us in developing countries are, we are looking at how to adapt sustainable consumption and production patterns. Next slide, please. So now, and you know, 
the, the challenges that we are facing in terms of climate change. At present, we are going through COVID. Uh, there is a rethinking about uh, how to think globally, one planet living. At the same time, how do you act locally so that we achieve self-sufficiency? And we have heard our prime minister. The underlying principles are uh, on one side, how do you consume what actually we need? And that's where we bring in the, the philosophy of Mahatma Gandhi, who said the world has enough for everyone's need, not enough for everyone's greed. And uh, more recently, our prime minister has uh, called us to uh, look for solutions by which we can produce what we can consume. Or in other words, how all consumers can become producers instead of looking for somewhere else. Uh, next slide, please. And that matches with what was the goals set by FAO for sustainable agriculture and rural development long time back. It's almost 25 to 30 years back that set how to improve food security by ensuring an appropriate sustainable balance between self-sufficiency and self-reliance. And these are the words we are hearing today. This is something which was defined long time back and how to promote employment and income generation in rural areas, particularly for poverty alleviation and of course, how do you conserve the natural resources because there is a gap between what uh, the nature can give us and what we are consuming at present, and how to protect the environment in terms of climate change, climate, global warming, etc. Next slide, please. Now, before I go into the subject of uh, um, integration, integrated system, I just wanted to have a slide so that we become sensitized about what are the challenges that we're facing in terms of uh, rural versus urban. Many people talk about why are the rural people subsidized? Now, my question is, who is actually subsidized? If you look at the electricity tariff in urban areas, you know, the, in some cases, like in Mumbai, the tariff can go up to 10 rupees or more per kilowatt hour. So many of us feel it's high. But is that true? Uh, if you click again, you can see what is the situation in the rural context where many people do not have access to great quality electricity, and they have to depend on their, on their own. Take the simple example of if I want to listen to radio, I have to use two uh, small AAA batteries, and um, in the market price of these batteries are about 15 rupees per, per cell. So if you buy two batteries, it's about 30 rupees. So we are using uh, two batteries, 30 rupees. What is the energy content of these batteries? It's a, typically 1.5 volts and 1,000 milliampere hour. So that is coming to about three watt hour. So we are paying three watt hour for 30 rupees, which comes to about 10,000 rupees per kilowatt hour. So that's where the differences. A rural uh, uh, person who would like to listen to radio just because he or she does not have access to electricity has to use very high cost electricity, which is coming from a uh, storage battery. Whereas in the urban areas, we are uh, spoiled because we don't have to invest in the power plant, whereas the, in the rural areas, they have to get these batteries to have their own generation of electricity on site. Okay. So if you keep that in mind, uh, we are actually subsidized in many ways without really recognizing it because the policy is decided by people in the cities and we don't really see these hidden costs that are involved in this. So we are talking about thousand times difference in terms of energy consumption. Obviously, the rural population does not consume the electricity as we do for our air conditioners, refrigerators, etc. And they try to manage with much less. Uh, whereas what has happened now, suddenly the government says that we have to reach out to rural areas and uh, they have extended the grid. But unfortunately, we, we do not have enough supply to meet. So when the people actually need that electricity, there is a lot more losses in the line and they don't get it in a regular manner. So this is where I, I wanted to introduce this concept of integrated approach. Because if you look at, um, next slide please, you can see the integrated approach. And you can see the pyramid. The pyramid represents what is our present energy consumption or carbon emission for any activity, whether it is uh, lighting up a lamp or driving a vehicle or running a pump for irrigation in the farm. So the triangle represents our present energy consumption. Uh, if you click, you'll find out that if we adapt, if we define our needs well, when you talk about defining how to go conscious behavioral lifestyle changes, you'll see automatically our wastages are minimized because we are more conscious about how we're using energy. And you can see the triangle has already the 
the pyramid that I have shown has already shrunk. We require much less resources. The next step is we are looking at what we call whole systems analysis or looking at the integrated approach right from the uh, um, demand to supply. If you look at the whole chain of demand to supply, I'll give you examples of those later on. Um, we'll find there are further improvements because we are bringing in the systems approach and I will uh, illustrate them by examples later. And further, if you bring in efficient systems, technologies which are more efficient, our triangle reduces drastically. And then you can see on the supply side, we don't have to provide all that big quantity of energy. Our energy requirement is shown as the top small triangle. Okay. So this is where we can see the systems approach going through in a systematic manner. We can manage to reduce our consumption in a drastic manner. I will start with by giving some examples. The simplest one is by um, if I talk about how do you uh, uh, light up. You know, uh, till very recently, So, Mohanty, you are having audio problem. Uh, he's having network problem. Looks like. Setu, exactly. you can hear me. Yeah, network problem is. Can see now. And, uh, you can now. Okay. Uh, actually, only about ten watts to use to light. Sorry, up. sorry. Can uh, you see the, the slide? The, yeah, can oh, you oh, hear I'll me? Come back. The, Yes, I'll come back. Okay. Yes. No, yes, one, one second. Yeah, it went off. Your your uh, your mic was off. For about two minutes, so you can oh, uh, go I'm back really one sorry. minute. Yeah, you go no. back one minute and talk. Okay, please. Okay. So um, um, you can see on your uh, screen the 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 pyramid, and you can see step by step as we start looking at behavioral lifestyle changes. You already reduce your requirement further if you go for whole system designing. That means you look at the demand to supply. Uh, there are ways by which you can reduce your demand further. And then you bring in technologies for uh, improving the efficiency of use. So all the three at the bottom are demand side measures. And on the top, then comes the renewables. It makes sense to bring in renewable at that stage because your requirements are much less and you are able to manage it much, much more efficiently. Uh, if I go to the next slide, I'm not able to control it. Yeah. Can you make that, please? Yeah, yeah. It has come. Yeah, so I, I would like to illustrate by just taking a very simple example so they can understand what I would like to uh, illustrate. Next one, please. So if you look at this incandescent lamp, uh, actually the lamp is a good heater. Uh, next slide, because the, that, the lamp is actually a good heater because uh, much of the energy that is supplied to this lamp is actually going to heat up the filament and only about 10% of that is converted into light. So when you're using a 100 watt lamp to provide 1,500 lumens of uh, lighting, actually a 90 watt is converted into heat. Only about 10 watts is given as light. If you go back uh, towards the source, you have transmission distribution losses, like another about 15 watts. I'm talking about good systems. I'm not talking about what is happening in reality where your transmission distribution losses can be even much higher. Okay. So when you come to the power plant, power plant efficiencies are typically 30 to 35 percent. So the energy that you use in coal is about 329 watts, whereas the energy which is delivered is about 10 watts. So you can see the overall efficiency is even less than 5 percent. Okay. So the, the block I've shown you, the bottom part, which is in blue, shows the actual energy delivered and the total uh, column shows the total amount of energy which is supplied. So it's like, you know, if you went to a... a a restaurant and you ask the, um, the waiter to bring you a, a, a glass of uh, Coke. He brings a glass of Coke, you can see at the bottom, there's only 5% of liquid and the rest of it is all bubble. How do you feel that about that? This is exactly what happens in our systems. And this is what it continued for a long time till the government intervened to change the market. And we'll, I'll show you what has been the outcome of that. Next slide, please. So the first, uh, attempt that we had was to shift from incandescent bulb to compact fluorescent lamp. The moment we just changed the simple lamp at the end use, you can see the impact on the upstream. We have not changed the transmission distribution system. We have not changed the power plant. Just by changing the lamp, 
our demand for energy demand for coal has come down from 329 to 83, which is a factor four improvement, just by changing the lamp. Okay? We don't, we have not changed the power plant. What does it mean? By changing the lamp, the same power plant can provide four times more energy. That means it can cater to requirement of four lights instead of just one lamp. We continue further. Now we have achieved what we call, you know, we have shifted from there. Next slide, please. Next. Now, now we have gone from a compact fluorescent lamp to what we call a light emitting diode or LED lamps. And you can see uh, the same output that is required. The energy that is required is the same. Energy service which is delivered is still 10 watts. But by the time you reach the power plant, we have reduced our demand for coal to only 48 watts. That's again a factor seven to eight. We have not changed our power plant. We have not modernized our power plant. We have not improved the efficiency in our system. And yet we are able to achieve factor seven to factor eight. That means with the same infrastructure, we are able to provide energy to more number of people, more number of lights, etc. Now you see, if we have done this, then it makes sense to switch over to renewable energy. Now we don't need to use coal because we have already reduced our requirement. If you go to the next slide, you can see how easily now it's possible for us to switch over from the conventional power plants to the solar panels, which are on your rooftop next to you, and you have no transmission distribution losses, you have no power plant losses, and you require a very small size of uh, solar panel, which can provide you the light. Okay. Whereas if we had started off by saying that we, we will change the power plant to uh, solar power plant without changing the end use uh, appliance, then it does not make sense. And that is what even today, many of our systems, we are talking about changing the power plant to uh, uh, solar system without really looking at the whole chain. Uh, this is an example. Next, please continue. Next slide, please. Next. So here you can see the steps that we have taken starting with incandescent lamp on the left, going to a compact fluorescent lamp. We have achieved what we call a factor four Next, we have achieved a factor seven, and by the time we use solar, we have achieved a factor 18, 18 times more efficient system in the whole. So this is possible because we have an integrated approach to looking at the problem. Instead of randomly starting with uh, first changing the power supply, we have looked at end use, what are the improvements possible, and then we can go step by step upwards, and we'll see the maximum amount of benefit you can get. Factor 18 improvement. Next slide, please. This is exactly what the government did. All that they have done is to how to change the market. Now, this was the initiative taken by the National Ujala dashboard, you can see. This, this is today's data, 36 crore, 362 million lamps have been re replaced within the span of last three, three and a half years time. Okay. Which has helped to reduce, you can see the millions of kilowatt hours reduced. It has helped to reduce the energy consumption in terms of cost. 18,833 crores of rupees. It has helped to avoid almost 10,000, 9,500 megawatt of power plant. Otherwise, with the increasing demand, we would have had to put new power plants and new emissions. And you can see the emission benefits just by changing one component, one small lamp. But unfortunately, the story behind is that this is an initiative of Ministry of Power, but under the Bureau of Energy Efficiency and Energy Efficiency Service Limited. But our, uh, um, the policy mechanism is such that each of the ministries is uh, separated. So one ministry does not uh, discuss or um, find solution. For example, uh, here we're looking at the demand side, but there is no contact between the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy Sources and Ministry of Power. As a result, Ministry of New and Renewable Energy Sources is working separately to look at how to put up more solar systems without looking at how one can improve the efficiency on the um, demand side first, whereas the Ministry of Power is looking at how to look at the demand side improvements without looking at how you can uh, bring in alternative energy sources. I'll give you another example. Next one, please. I, I've just tried to give three examples so that you can see this is an example in the household. The next example, next slide, please. Yes, I'll talk about transportation. Next slide, please. You know, how many, how many of us are actually aware that the Cars that we drive are 
hugely beneficial, which goes in your only about five percent to seven percent to move the vehicle. There are lots of as an efficiency of typically an efficiency of twenty five percent because. A uh, 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 standard engine has a higher efficiency, but when you're moving, the engine go, undergoes various uh, evolutions. As a result, the engine efficiency keeps changing. So already you can see at the tail end, uh, uh, tail pipe, they've lost almost 75 percent of the energy. Okay. So what is remaining again that goes through the uh, to the gearbox, the losses. By the time it is transferred to the wheel, the wheel has two functions. One is to move the car, the other one is to keep it on the road. So there is frictional losses. And then, of course, you have aerodynamic losses, etc. So overall, you can see when you're buying, let's say, uh, diesel or gasoline or uh, petrol for 70 to 80 rupees, only about uh, one twentieth of that is moving us. The rest of it is lost in the system. Next slide, please. The moment we think about changing from normal car to electric vehicle, still using the inefficient power plant, Already we have started thinking about various ways of improving because the car is designed to have lesser weight. It is more aerodynamically designed. And the moment we reduce the weight, we get some benefits. We have a motor, the efficiency is almost 90 to 95%. So all, as a result, we have eliminated lots of losses and we have already achieved a certain amount of efficiency improvements. Further, if you now you can think about using a solar instead of using a thermal power plant and the distribution network. Next slide, please. Now, now you can see, uh, next, next slide, please. So here you can see already we have a factor four improvement just by changing from, Go back. Uh, yeah, and it's all right. Yeah, the, so uh, here you can see, yeah. So the moment you shift from a normal car, which is running with uh, uh, fuel, to uh, a car which is running with electricity produced by the coal-fired power plant, we have already achieved what we call a factor four improvement. Okay? Four times more improvement, that means with the same amount of energy, we are going four times longer distance. Next slide, please. Now, this is where, again, it makes sense. We can switch off. We don't need to go to the power plant. We can produce the electricity at home, in the office area, wherever we are. And by using PV solar, we can achieve even further and, and these numbers are actual numbers because these are the numbers that I have driving my our own electric car. Okay? So the numbers I'm using are not just fiction, fictional ones, they're actual numbers. The next, next slide will show us the whole picture. So you can see we start with 1.35 kilowatt hour per kilometer. I've converted all units to kilowatt hour. The moment we switch to coal, we have achieved a factor four. And the moment we shift to solar PV, we've achieved a factor 14. So 14 times more efficient just because we have reduced, eliminated our power plant, uh, and we have eliminated the transmission distribution losses. So you can see the benefits of bringing in solar at the right moment makes much more uh, sense. Next slide, please. But the story does not end there. I told you the efficiency is only about five times. And this is an example of the, the, uh, the, the picture showed at, at home. We have solar power, which is produced on the rooftop. The car is just below, which is being charged. Okay. Next slide, please. The as I said, the story doesn't end there. What do you see that the car has an efficiency of about five to 7%, but actually what is the car moving? Okay. Uh, if you click again, you can see very often you have in a car, there's one or two people there. And a person may weigh 75 kgs, but the car might be weighing 1.2 to 1.3 tons. So that 5 to 7 percent, which is actually used to move the car, uh, much of it is there to move the car and not the person. But finally, whom are you moving? Okay. So 10 times more energy is going to move the car and only about small amounts. So if you start off by that 70, 70 to 75 rupees that we put in the gasoline, out of that, only about 70 paisa is actually moving us. The rest of it is moving the car and all the other losses that you can think of. So our systems are grossly inefficient, even after improving. This is where we need to have a thinking. The behavior and lifestyle changes. If I'm going a, kil a kilometer or uh, five kilometers, do I need to take the car? Then I have an alternative. Next slide, please. So the moment we switch from a car to a motorcycle or scooter, now, if you click, you'll see the numbers below. 
already we have reduced the weight of the car's weight is 1.2 ton. We can bring it down to less than 100 kgs. Yes, please. Yes, uh, Next, please. You can see the numbers below. Yes. So you can see uh, already we have achieved from factor 14 to factor 68 with the same uh, amount of energy. We can go much faster. And this is, of course, an electric uh, scooter. So it's charged on site. So there is no pollution. It's, uh, there is no losses as such. Next, we can go even further because in most of our cities, uh, there's so much of traffic congestion. Next slide, please. There's so much of traffic congestion that we can't actually move. Mo most people are stranded and we are consuming energy for nothing. This is what I use. You can see me riding bicycle. This is what I do in Pondicherry when I'm uh, moving around because the city is very small within two, three, four, five, five kilometers. I would prefer to take a cycle. I don't, I'm not uh, caught in the traffic jam. I can move around much e more easily. Uh, if you click, you'll see the numbers again. From factor 14 with the car, we got factor 68. And with a bicycle, I can achieve a factor 136. It is electrically driven. Whenever I need, I can pedal. When I don't, I start sweating. I can make use of it or I'm going on a slope. I can make use of this bicycle. So as a result, you can see uh, if you have a systems approach, it's possible for you to improve your overall system efficiency not by three, four, five times. Here I'm talking about 136 times. Okay. So I'll take the next example so that we are talking about agriculture. And next example, I'll very quickly go through a water supply for irrigation purpose. Next slide, please. So again, I know what we use is not what we need. Next slide, please. A typical pumping system, if you see, starting from the fuel which is going to the power plant and the water which is delivered, we have about 10% of energy, which is actually left to pump the water. Power plant itself, there is 75, 70% losses. Then you have transmission distribution, motor losses, drive trend losses, pump losses, throttle losses, pipe losses, etc. So by the time it's delivered, about 10 units of energy is used, uh, available for um, uh, supplying the water. Next slide, please. Now, you know, if you start looking at actually do we need that much amount of water? Then there's a lot of work going on as to how we can uh, combine water in, uh, how can we find ways of managing both our water and energy better? We're talking about water energy nexus. Today we have, for example, I gave this example of uh, the research or actual field work which has been done in Oroville. We are looking at cloud-based precision irrigation system and they have actually achieved to divide the water consumption by about five to six times. But I have taken the number, I have not gone into very big numbers. The moment I reduce my water demand by 50%, I'm not talking about 80% requirement. The moment I change it, you can see the number 10 becomes five. When I reduce my water demand from 10 to five, my energy requirement reduces from 10 to five. And you can see immediately without any changes in the piping, in the throttle losses, pump losses, etc., the fuel input in my power plant is reduced from 100 to 50. I've achieved a factor two, okay? Just by reducing my requirement. And this is where, the, when you look at the whole system, we don't have to put a new power plant. We don't have to improve our transmission distribution network. We have already achieved a factor two. We have reduced our demand for fuel and cost of uh, electricity by 50%, just by taking care of the end use application. Next, please. And of course, I can go further. Uh, next slide, please. And you can see here, then I can, uh, can you go back to the previous slide? Then of course, I can look into the efficiency in each of the cases using more smooth pipes, uh, eliminating the throttle, throttle losses because we go on putting mindlessly lots of valves in many places. And each of these valves, there is further pressure drop. We can eliminate those losses. A uh, pump can be more efficient, drivetrain can be more efficient. By each of them, we can improve the efficiency, transmission distribution. Already you can see the Ministry of Power is working how to minimize the transmission distribution losses. Power plants can be operated in more efficient manner. And you can see with the same system, now we have reduced our fuel requirement five times. That means um, we have achieved a factor five. Uh, I will request another last three minutes. Yes, yeah, minutes. I'm finishing. I'm finishing. I wanted oh. to give these examples. I could go into more details, but you see, unfortunately, what is happening whenever we have uh, government programs, 
We are looking more at numbers. We are not looking at how to achieve this in a holistic manner. This requires involvement of various uh, government agencies. It requires expertise of many people. Whereas what we are looking at is going just putting the solar pump in the field. Whereas we are not looking at how do you reduce the water requirement? How do you improve the overall system the efficiency, etc. Next slide, please. So the moment now we can decide instead of using the power plant, traditional power plant and transmission lines, we can go for on-site power generation with solar. We have eliminated our power plant and transmission distribution losses as well. Okay. So as a result, you can see earlier I had shown you a factor five. The moment we do this, we have achieved factor 14 to factor 15 because our power plant losses are very high. Okay. So if you have each of these cases I've tried to show, if you have an integrated approach, if you have a holistic way of looking at issues, and mind you, all that I've talked about, the costs actually come down because we have spent more money on the demand side as a result of supply. Yeah. I think yes, we lost him again. Yeah. Uh, no. uh, so holistic now, approach actually reduces your cost overall. Can you hear me? Can you yeah, can now you hear I can me? hear it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Next slide, please. So I would like to conclude. Okay. Uh, we need to make this transition. It doesn't happen overnight. We cannot just go to renewable energy future tomorrow. We need to go step by step. So the, we have given transition time because we are talking about 2040, 2050, etc. If the government makes all these rash programs on renewables, they are likely to be wasteful and even self-defeating at times because people will lose faith in this type of systems. Even if you give free solar cells that is being done in many cases, okay, that itself is not going to be, uh, in, be beneficial. Okay, unless first starting with, we adopt behavioral and lifestyle changes on one side so that we define what our needs are following what Mahatma Gandhi said. We must define well our needs are. In my case, for instance, I give you an illustration. We only have three kilowatts of solar panel on our rooftop. We have everything at home. We have air conditioners, refrigerators, washing machine, name whatever you want, electric car, scooter, uh, everything we have, but only with three kilowatt of uh, system because we have optimized our uh, consumption by using more efficient systems. And on, the, on top of it, we produce about 30 to 35% more electricity than we consume. Obviously, I could run my air conditioner because I'm producing more. I don't get paid for it. But it doesn't make sense. If I don't need an air conditioner, why should I just run the air conditioner? Because I have excess solar electricity. Somebody else is benefiting when it's going back to the grid. So we need to emphasize more on the behavioral and lifestyle changes. There's no point in putting bigger pumps and just pumping more water. We can use the same panel for benefiting other people. Okay? And innovate by achieving dramatic energy productivity. I talked about how to achieve uh, factor 10, factor 20, factor 30 types of improvements. Okay? Thank you very much. And that ends my slides. I just wanted to give you an introduction of where inefficiencies are. And if we just talk about uh, attacking the problem from one point of view, we may not get the best results. Okay. So we need to look at it in a whole holistic manner, an integrated manner, and I'm sure we'll get much more benefits. We don't have to go for new bigger power plants. With the power plants that are existing, we can achieve much more. Thank you. And I'm ready for questions. Thank you, Brahmananda. I think you're a good storyteller. Uh, you made me realize, actually, uh, we don't look at many things, actually. Uh, we utilize very less. So we don't produce what we need, actually. We produce much more. We waste much more. It's a very good. I think you also made another point, according to me, is the uh, importance of interaction between various government departments before doing this decision. We already learned that from the uh, previous uh, speakers also. We learned. Uh, for example, the solar water pump having issues, inflation problems, because of this coordination, probably it's not there. It's, I think it's a very good, interesting. I will take question. I see Dr. Sangeeta, raise hand. Dr. Sangeeta, please. Dr. Sangeeta, can you yes. enable? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, it was an excellent presentation. Thank you so much for the presentation. I have two small questions, sir. One is your... Uh, when you talk of solar energy and you're talking of something on your rooftop, I wanted to know if it's off-grid or on-grid 
Yes. And whether you are using batteries for the night. So, what kind of a system is that? Yes, uh, I started using uh, solar energy from 2001. Okay. And that time, that time we had to go off grid because the regulations didn't allow it. Okay. And when it evolved, actually, as you must have heard uh, two, three days back when uh, Dr. Arun said, they started making the policy in 2030. But 2010 onwards, I have been interacting with the local government. And I said, I would like to go ahead and show you that it's possible for you to fit into the grid. Okay? Yes. So I became what we call IPP. In the normal terms, you take, talk about independent power producer. But actually, I was an okay. illegal power producer because I was not allowed <laughs> to do it. But I did it and I informed them that I'm doing it. And I showed them in 2001 that it's possible for you to have interaction. Of course, I whatever I fed in, I didn't get any credit for that. And on top of it, whatever I took from them, I had to pay for it. So I have been using batteries and batteries are one of the weakest links. Okay. Sir, can I ask one Thank question, you. please? Yeah, just, just a minute. I will, I'll, I'll come back to you. I'll come back. Uh, Gandhi, Gandhi, uh, Murthy, please. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Mohanty. This was a great uh, presentation. Really, I hope. A uh, few things. I mean, as you just uh, alluded to, the batteries are the weakest link. So, uh, in terms of those efficiencies, but uh, in terms of the overall efficiencies, it looks pretty good. Uh, we do get like 14 to 20 percent, 20 times the improvements. But then, in terms of scalability, what is the scalability? Because there are constraints on the batteries to scale these systems. What are your thoughts on those things? How scalable are these? Because yes. these has to be scalable if we want to take it. Yes, um, Thank you. I don't I, I don't think we should Hello. Uh, yeah, yeah, wait wait a minute. He's lovely lost the connection. Just wait a minute. Hold on. Within 10 seconds, you must come back. Sayed, I have a suggestion okay, in this case. Yeah. You know, Putting those who are not, yeah. Each of them batteries. Yeah. 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 Uh, so I'll mean? give an example. You know, why is it, and many of you also raised this, why is it that we are not using solar street lights in the city? I think this is an absurd idea because we have the yeah. grid available. And why would you go for each street light with the battery separately? It does not make sense. Yeah. So in the decentralized conditions, it makes sense. So where we need to put the batteries, let us put the batteries. And you can see all of us use UPS. How many of us actually change your fans and lights to become efficient? Today we have VLDC fans. How many of you have used it? Now we have fans that are consuming less than 30 watts. Okay? Yes. So the moment you change the fan, because it costs you 3,000 rupees, people will not change it. But when your somebody comes and says, your battery is dead, you have to put a new battery, you are ready to put 12,000 rupees there. And your autonomy is much less because the moment you change the fan, you can run two fans with the same battery without having to change the battery. Thank you. So we need to Thank have a holistic approach. Okay. Thank you. We have a lot of questions. Uh, uh, Dr. Virendra Kumar, you want to ask a question? Sir, uh, very nice presentation. Sir, I want to ask a question. अभी तक पांच हाथ सौ नंबर का छह सात हाथ पावर का भी मोटर आप सोलर एनर्जी से नहीं चला सकते। डेप्थ है 300 टू 400, 500 अप्पू 600 फीट पर द फार्मर। सेकंड थिंग सर, सब्सिडी गवर्नमेंट जो देता है, वो पांच लाख का सिस्टम आता है पांच हाथ पावर का। फार्मर शेयर बनता है 75,000, एक किसान को चार लाख पच्चीस एक जिले के अंदर कितना किसान है दो से ढाई लाख किसान तीन लाख किसान चार लाख किसान उसमें से केवल दस से पंद्रह किस ऐसे तो हमको हंड्रेड इयर्स लग जाने वाले तो फिर कैसे सोलर प्रैक्टिकल प्रॉब्लम है a few people benefit. I no, no, no problem. No it. problem. You can tell in English, Hindi also. Yeah, Abdul, yeah. no problem. Let him understand. So, I think. It's yeah. Uh, um, the, the, I, I raise the same issue. Why should a few rich farmers benefit only? And they oversize the thing, and they're not doing opti optimizing the whole system. If you have a mini grid, the mini grid will supply, and then you don't have any constraints of five kilowatt, six kilowatt, because the mini grid can supply much higher capacities. See? 
And the mini grid will not only take care of your water requirement, it's also going to take care of your lighting requirement, fans, and the whole community's requirement also have enough energy for other economic activities. So I don't believe that one should go for this individual small system and it's only benefiting the rich people because you have a business model by which somebody is providing you the service just like the grid in the cities. We don't put our own power plants. How many people in the cities have actually gone for solar? It does not make sense. In my house, if I had the choice, I did it to experiment it, but I would prefer actually putting that money in the rural areas if there was a mechanism to actually provide service to the villages. Okay, thank you. Now we have a question from uh, Narendra Shah. Yeah, actually, Sayyid, buy-in was not a question. I had a small suggestion. You know, uh, I think those who are even panelists who are not speaking or something like that, if they mute their video, we'll get a much better bandwidth, I think. And we, yeah, yeah, yeah. we would, I, I think we would request uh, to unmute the videos, yeah. at least those who do not want to speak. That's a little suggestion okay. I have. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Dr. Gajan Singh has a question. Yeah, Pramanand, I'm going to ask you as a teacher. Yes, sir. <laughs> the biggest uh, challenge is, uh, as you mentioned, the different ministries or departments working in silos and not really working uh, together. You work with a policy group also at AIT. Uh, is there a way around that putting these people together before uh, this? Like rural, I, I agree with you that solar pump alone uh, is not uh, good enough if the entrep one entrepreneur puts a plant or 10 kilowatt or something, okay, and runs two, three pumps uh, uh, in a village and uh, also for supply for lighting and other things, that'll be much more. Is there a plan? Have you heard of anything where finance is provided? Not in the beginning. I'm not interested in giving a big subsidy in the beginning. What you need is a loan in the beginning, and then whether it's a farmer or entrepreneur and makes the payment on installment basis over a period of time. Like you buy a car, you pay an installment, you buy a tractor, you pay an installment, you buy a house, you pay an installment. Why we are giving 50%, 60% subsidies right in the beginning? Have you yes. discussed these things? Professor Singh, this, these are new models that have been uh, working, especially in Africa and many other places now. Unfortunately, we have gone into this subsidy mode, which I really dislike, because when you give subsidy, you bring in inefficiency and corruption. The subsidy should be on the basis of what is delivered. I'll give you an example of Thailand. Yeah, that's what I was saying, a yeah. payment on install basis, yes. that you are using it, so, you are yeah. earning something from it and then making a yes. payment from it. Sorry, got stuck. <laughs> Again, he, he got stuck. Uh, Atul, in the meantime, you can tell your question so we can put together. Yeah. Atul. <laughs> Good evening, sir. Uh, my question is particularly, uh, can we suggest the yes, risk model for the, so they can pay the, for the next 10 years? Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Absolutely. So we are talking about pay as you go model. Today, there are many systems where you have pay as you go, just like you pay for your telephone services. Okay? So uh, for example, in uh, Senegal, where I'm supporting a project where you have a street light and people can draw a line, but they cannot use it unless they pay a certain amount of money. So the moment they pay on the, with a the telephone, they have access to that electricity in their home with the same street light, which is lighting up their streets. There are many such models and funding mechanism is also there. For example, I'm, I'm involved actually in uh, lending money in many cases where we're talking about crowd lending when mm -hmm. people collect this money, they provide the service and they're paying back from the amount that we see. All this is possible only if our mindset changes. We should be giving subsidy in the, we need to give subsidy because the cost, as I've showed you, in the rural areas, people are paying much higher rate for the same services as compared to the urban areas. So we don't realize it. The interest or yeah. the interest, you charge less. Yeah, yeah. It can be interest subsidy. You know, for example, in my own city, I propose, you know, many people are not going for solar. And oh, we have rooftops we get, uh, that get heated up. The very simple example, people only pay 10 to 15%. The rest of the money is given by the bank. And the utility will pay back for the electricity which is fed into the grid. And the, that money goes back to the bank. I don't care. I'm just put 10 to 15. I get reliable electricity. 
and I'm helping to reduce the emissions. Uh, Sorry, I'm, I'm uh, a little bit. Uh, no, no problem. Very good. Uh, Brahmanand, I think uh, I, I would suggest uh, we'll have the more deeper discussions in the tag group uh, because uh, now I, I think we are time going out of time actually. I think I'm sorry. Learned... I'm sorry. No, no, absolutely. I, yes. We enjoyed. I enjoyed. But I, mean, I could talk for a long time because there are lots I know, of issues. I, yeah. I know. I know. But I think we have a tag group which uh, specifically works on these issues. Uh, like uh, you and me talking right now, we cannot remove the problem of subsidy. Uh, but I think uh, like uh, pay on the go when you go, that is uh, in UK, you pay for electricity like that. You pre-charge. So it, it will come everything. Let us uh, work in the tag group. I think uh, if uh, nobody else has a real burning question to ask him, I would like to conclude. But I will, uh, anybody can interrupt me and tell me if really you want a question uh, answer from him. Okay. Uh, I Hello. Would say Hello. Uh, yeah, Dr. Said. Dr. Said. Yeah, please, please, please pick it out. Yeah, please, sir. Uh, yeah. Uh, Dr. Brahmanand, uh, I compliment. This is a nice presentation, but let me tell you a real story. Yes. When this electric scooter was in the market in Delhi, I was uh, one of the first customer. Uh, you, you can say that I'm a proud owner. But what happened after a year or two, I could find many scooters in the market, but it was phased out. Uh, Within three, four years, nobody was buying any electric scooty. Uh, this hero, hero uh, scooty, which has been marketed in the northern India, I'm speaking about Delhi. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, Maybe okay, okay. battery battery problem. No, I can I can explain this. I have the I have I worked with already with the with the scooter in Nasik. Uh, actually, the Pune is one place where you use the, the scooters. The market actually, they think for the uh, scooters is only for towns because you can you cannot charge. The city. My my That's question is my question is at that time also government gave subsidy. Also, no, no, right we now are, we are not talking we are not talking subsidy. No, no, no. Right now no. the scooters are used in in uh, Maharashtra very much. In Pune you can get you can get in Nasik everywhere the small towns are using scooters. This is what okay, I want so to say. it has it has gone from big town to small town. Yeah, so all the is a market. Actually, there is a lot of research done on where it will hit. In Bombay, you cannot find it, for example. So let us... Okay. Uh, okay. No, just, the, I, I, I would may, I just, may I just intervene? Yes. Yeah, uh, please, please, one please. One of the biggest problems with the vehicles are lead acid batteries. The yes. vehicles require uh, high starting uh, energy, and that cannot be used uh, with lead acid batteries where the life is less. If you go... I use uh, electric car and scooter both and bicycle. All of them are using lithium batteries. No problem at all. Yeah. Direction. Anyway, Dr. Indramani, I think uh, uh, you can conclude now. I think uh, thank like you. to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you uh, both uh, Sasi Kumarji and uh, Dr. Monty. It was a wonderful talk. Uh, you know, we had a discussion yesterday in TAG group and we have uh, some plan, three-stage plan that, uh, that we are going to do. And uh, this uh, Dr. Mohanty's uh, talk was uh, really in that line only that we have to take uh, some initiative. Again, uh, this in energy system, uh, this uh, processing uh, was this is Sasi Kumar explained, you know, how to make it, uh, uh, you know, available to to the people. Means uh, one, one industry is doing how to take it to other, as Professor Singh said, how it can be used by uh, uh, you know students those facilities how how that technology can be uh, you know, made available to others then this uh, uh, other other uh, talk uh, all these uh, you know factors how we can achieve so we will bring out uh, you know uh, some white paper kind of thing uh, some article and uh, we will, uh, uh, you know, share with the rest of our members, and uh, then one or two cases we are going to take up from our side, uh, taking as a, as a from a tag group, that how can we demonstrate actually that this can happen, and the, so that will be that will be our, uh, uh, you know, uh, program, and uh, with this uh, we are, you know, this group we are concluding. We have another session on fourth. That will be on uh, bicycle farming, uh, greenhouses, etc. 
so i request you to join and uh, on 7th also we are going to have a session in which uh, we will be having again from process and uh, from csio that all these are instrumentation and other things we will try to understand and uh, uh, more we are discussing in tag group and uh, let us hope that uh, our objective is achieved bringing people together networking and giving solution you know in some form so with this uh, i thank you all uh, to join uh, this session today's session it was very 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 much interesting and once again i thank the speakers uh, and you all thank you very much thank you all of you i would again request you all come who are interested to join the tag group please uh, drop in a line and uh, next topic is going to be very interesting again a subsidy topic uh, which poly houses were given with full of subsidy for 15 years and then after 2 years nobody is using it because they say same growth is there in the poly house and outside but actually we try to our team try to contact uh, even uh, dubai and all people are telling poly house produces much more than normal outside so we will try to take that also one of the topic so next time we will request you all of you Thank you very much again all of you thank, thank you. you thank you thank you